Welcome to the first edition of Platform, the new podcast from Wheelscene. We're going to be using this series to speak to some of our favourite people in blading, people who we believe are doing interesting and positive things for the sport. The first person we're going to speak to is Ant Medina. Ant has been responsible for countless online videos over the years. He has produced videos for ground control and razors. He made Scott Quinn's Pro Skate promo, which is probably my favourite Scott Quinn section ever. He's also responsible for bringing everyone's attention to Andrew Broom, who is, I believe, one of the most exciting skaters of this generation. Um, he even worked with us doing the Wheel Scene Select series. Um, he did one for, again, Andrew Broom and Brian Weiss. Um, he's also made various full-length videos, including Swag, Dag Days, Waterloo, and Local. This year, he released Candy, which, in my opinion, is one of the best VODs, full-length VODs of 2020, and featured the Mason Richard section, which was just an incredible comeback section and one that many people didn't see coming. Um, again, it's also got an incredible Andrew Broom section. There's sections from other great guys as well, like Ant himself and Heath and Brandon Bobadilla. And there's just, yeah, it basically shows that Texas has got one of the best scenes in the world and Ant is documenting it incredibly. So without further ado, cue the music. How are we doing, handsome? Uh yeah, all right. Just got off work, so you you, you look a bit nervous, and are you nervous? I feel like you. No, I just been like running around <laughs> trying to clean shit up before this. <laughs> is is that as in to not get into trouble with Abby? Is that what you're telling me right now? No, no, we get our groceries delivered, so they just came in like ah, uh, right, just okay. a minute ago. So I was like scrambling and putting them away, and yeah. That's All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're looking. The beard's looking trimmed and uh, well, well looked after. You've been. Yeah, I just actually got a new uh, shaver and I tested it out. It's like, uh, unfortunately, I think it trims it a little shorter than I want it, but that's like the biggest guard on it will trim it a little too short. So I'm trying to figure it out. But oh, yeah, it's funny. Okay. Funny you notice that. <laughs> <laughs> you still working in the same place? Uh, no, I, uh, I'm working. Different spot now. It's just a small call center. Uh, yeah, I've been doing it for like two years, but it's cool. I get paid way more, so works. And I got shorter hours, so. All right, okay. Um, I hear congratulations are in order on your uh, your new addition to the family, your new dog baby. <laughs> thank you, thank you. What's this one called? Uh, her, so it's a girl. Uh, Abby wanted to name her something. She likes names that can be female or male. Right, so okay. her name is Stevie. Stevie. Like it. Okay. Like Stevie Nicks. All right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What's the other one called again? Django. Django and Stevie. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> um, are are yeah, they tolerating each already. other yet or are they still just uh, scrapping no. all the time? They Yeah, they love each other, but they play a lot. So I'm hoping they don't break out into a fight because it gets pretty loud. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, so... Is this Abby's way of preparing you for an actual baby or are you just going to continue uh, like having more and more dogs and be that weird couple with like five canines running about your house? <laughs> no, two, two is max. So we yeah. originally had planned to, you know, get a male, female and have puppies. And then I thought about it and I was like, I don't want, if that happened, it'd be like, we keep at least one of the dogs. I'm like, I don't want three dogs. So <laughs> that, that is a lot yeah. of walking. Two, two is Two is it for me. But yeah, no, Abby's like uh, about five years from committing to possibly having a baby. So I, I got some time. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, you, you can do, you can do a whole lot in five years. You better yeah. start making up a bucket list of what you want to do because after you have kids, free time just evaporates <laughs> into thin air. I bet, I bet. Yeah, I could feel it with the dogs already, so. 
uh, sure. Yeah, that is. It's like it's like a teaser. It's like a teaser of the the responsibility <laughs> to come. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So, other congratulations on Candy, which, in my opinion, is the best VOD out this year so far. I've lost mm-hmm. count of the amount of times I've watched it. In fact, the only one that I think even comes close to it, like full length, is Quadro. Um, you've got to be happy with the response to the video because people are still talking about it now. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I was, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I knew it was going to be long or there's so many people. I was like, I, I got to make it as short as I can possibly make it. And 40 minutes to me is like, a little long for a skate video, you know what I mean? But it's, I think we pulled it off. The main thing was for me was I wanted people to be able to watch it over and over again, you know what I mean? And usually you don't do that with long videos. But this one, I, yeah, I hear that all the time. People say they watch it all the time or watch it every day, watch it before I go skate. I'm like, sick. That's great. I've only seen it like maybe four times. So. Wait, but what? if people love it, then that's great. <laughs> oh, right. So as in when you were editing it, you were just focusing on the individual sections? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I don't ever edit as I go. So like uh, once we're done filming, then I start editing. And uh, yeah, I would really just choose choose somebody. Um, if the song was working well, I just keep going with it. Usually I could just finish it right there, at least the rough draft. But if I'm getting, like having some struggles... I might switch over to somebody else and come back to it, try that route, you know? Okay. It, like, when you say it's 40 minutes long, it doesn't feel like it's for. It actually does feel like a short video because you get to the end uh, of it and you're like, whoa, that passed pretty quickly. But then the caliber of skaters that you've got in it, you guys are incredibly lucky in Texas because you've got a lot of skaters who aren't sponsored, mm-hmm. don't really, like, dedicate, like their full time to like they all have other lives like some of the guys have even got kids and stuff and like they're still skating at an incredible level and loads of people have commented on that being like why are these guys like andrew broom's the only sponsored skater in the video right oh and hunter maybe uh well i don't really think the hunter has a sponsor i don't know he may be because he he just had that was he not on the racers or was he well he was he still might be but you know, he was working for Cirque du Soleil with uh, Kevin Lapierre. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And during that time, he obviously put skating on the back burner. So I don't think he was getting free skates like regularly. But so yeah, for the most part, it's just Andrew, I think, is the only one. Because John but, Sullivan used to be sponsored, but he isn't anymore. No, John is my age. So I think John definitely does not care about sponsors. But he's, yeah, he's amazing. Definitely could be. But that's just... He's got a kid now too. I mean, it's not. That's behind him. You know what I mean. That that doesn't seem to stop him getting out all the time. It just seems like he now takes the kid to sessions as well. Like yeah, from he, what he, I've seen of your photos. Oh yeah, yeah. He actually just visited um, uh, this weekend, past weekend. Can you hear these dogs? I way? can hear them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're playing. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. He he's like he's adjusting to it for sure. Because I guess in in Dallas he doesn't street skate a whole lot, so it's. It's a little easier at a park, you know what I mean? You're kind of to the side. Uh, people are chilling in the grass, and then he goes and gets a run in, comes back. But street's a little different because we're driving spot to spot, and it's a little more, it's a little different for him, I think. But plus, it's got to help having a partner who also skates because then he doesn't have yeah. to try and justify it as much because she she can be like, well, yeah, I get it because I would obviously like to go out as well. Yeah, um, absolutely, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, it's pretty cool. Getting back to the video, uh-huh. are, are you gonna are you gonna re- reveal numbers to us? Are you gonna tell us how successful it was? Because y- you told me in private. So but... you, I thought you, yeah, I thought you'd ask us, and I totally <laughs> forgot. Um, I think it was over five hundred downloads. I want to say five hundred like, downloads, which is way better than uh, it's more than I expected. You know what I mean? That is incredibly good. So yeah, then sure. comes the next important part. What did you guys do with the money? Uh, so we wanted to like, uh, the original plan all along was to, um, put it all together and like go on a group trip or something. And then that kind of became evident that it's pretty hard to get everybody on the same schedule. So we just split it up in equal eight ways. 
Okay. And when you were making the video, we kind of chatted back and forth quite a bit and you're very, very critical of everything you ever released. In fact, I'm pretty sure you told me once that you've never been fully happy with anything you've ever made. So how does Candy hold up against the other videos that you've made and do you feel satisfied with this one or do you feel the most satisfied with this one? Um, as a whole, for sure, I think this is probably my favorite video that I feel the best about. And I think it's because like we were supposed to release a video in March and then COVID hit. So everything was kind of shut down. So really I had, you know, uh, just months to just keep watching things and tweaking them over and over again. And yeah, for the most part, I mean, I'm always going to make something and like think, Oh, I could have did this a little differently or whatever, but this one more than any other project I've worked on, I think it's like pretty content with it. I think the only edit I've ever made that I'm like, I, you know, I wouldn't change anything would be the one that I made actually for you of Andrew, the wheel scene one. Oh, uh, That's probably my favorite edit. Oh, not the re. You made two, didn't you? Because the first one was the remix and then the yeah, second one yeah, was Yeah, but the original selects. one, the, the wheel scene selects. Yeah, exactly. I think that was probably my favorite one where I look at it even today and I'm like, that's, that's his best section. Maybe not skating wise. He's definitely getting better, but just everything about it I like. Um, but that's pretty rare for me to make something and just be like, yeah, this is sick. I like it. <laughs> I was actually, I was watching some of your uh, old stuff back. I'd somehow like, you know how when you click on YouTube and it gives you suggestions and it showed up yeah. some of the swag sections and some, uh, of the, some of the music in that has not aged well. Yeah, see, and, it, and it, we joke about that shit all the time. Mason, that, Mason Richards in particular, oh, that, that dubstep oh, yeah. track, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah, we gave him shit about it all the time. <laughs> uh, I think that was the last time when I, I made a full video and I was like, yeah you know what the next video like i'll give you guys input on songs but i'm not i'm not gonna go with the song that you absolutely want if i hate it but that was that was the video that was like i'm not doing that again and like that was the song that we just dog on the most like right yeah, okay it's, it's pretty terrible yeah yeah i was I, I know your i know your stance on dubstep <laughs> so i remember when looking back and that and going geez can't believe you actually that was that was definitely a product of that era but um oh for sure man yeah but you had a couple of rogue choices in this one. You had the the uh, what's his name? I always get it wrong. Boba Boba Dilla. Boba Boba Dilla. Dilla. Boba that was Dilla. that was quite an out there choice for you. He chose yeah. that song though, didn't he? No, he didn't. Um, he didn't actually. No, no, he didn't. Uh, Brandon's too young, so I don't. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, like, I don't not, trust you know, him. Just yeah, I, d I don't trust him music wise. Uh, the song he had in mind was pretty terrible. Um, and, and it, us, you know, we say this to him all the time, like, we're not, it's not like, uh, he'll watch this and be like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Yeah, we give Brandon shit a lot just because he's the youngest one. But yeah, I don't, the song he, he suggested was pretty, pretty corny. And then I, I think that him, was it. I think you told me that was it. He suggested a song and you were like, nah, that's, we're not doing that. Yeah. yeah I, I, it's like, I thought he was just joking around. You know what I mean? I just, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is definitely not going to happen. Um, <laughs> and then I, I made a section um, and the song was an instrumental. It was pretty cool, but it was like, I, I really liked his skating. He had like a lot of great clips, I thought. And so I made the section and I was like, you know what, this is pretty pretty safe it just felt like normal like um easily forgettable in a way just because of the song and then i was yeah i just that was one of the one of the uh things i was talking about i you know i finished the video and then i had so much time that i was able to change things so i there's certain parts certain things i wasn't happy with so i'd keep looking for songs and then i found that song later on and i was like you know what let's fucking go out on a limb Let, let's try this song and he loved it immediately and everybody i talked to about it loved it and i was like yeah let's do it so many people raved about his section yeah, yeah. um that that huck thing he does over the rail into the long steps that just looked like a <laughs> bad idea from the very beginning yeah, i'm gonna i'm sure. gonna show the clip in the corner so that people can just see a couple of those slams they are okay horrible like one yeah. of them it looks like he was he was like really close to getting it and then the next one he just eats shit like it yeah, looks so for sure bad. yeah we, he so that was his idea that spot was his idea 
um, because it's a little north where he lives. And he brought us there. And he told me, he was like, yeah, I want to jump over this rail. And originally, I thought he meant like just to flat, you know what I mean? Just jump straight over to flat. And I was like, you mean like right here? And he was like, oh, no, I was thinking over the step. And then I was like, oh, shit. So he jumped over just over the rail to flat, like pretty easily. So we're like, oh, damn, like maybe he can do it. And then he ate shit. And then he ate shit like three more times. And we went back. So he thought the issue was that he was skating anti. So he was like, maybe if I have all four, you know, all eight wheels, I can do it. So we went back later. That's the one in a different shirt. It's like a red shirt, I think. Yeah. And he ate some pretty massive shit. And immediately was like, I I just can't do it. I don't want to try anymore. (laughs) And we were like, I don't blame you. That's that's one of the ones where as a friend, you're like, I don't want you to try that anymore. (laughs) Well, it's like... you know, at a certain point, you if someone's trying something really fucked up and they're eating shit, but you think that they got it, you're like, I think that you have it, though. This was the opposite. It was like, yeah, you should probably stop, dude, because you are you hit the ground and your legs just collapse. You know what I mean? Like, you're not close. So there's no point of potentially getting, like, seriously hurt on that. Plus, yeah, it's one of those ones where if the stairs are that close after landing, your your body position has to be perfect in order to ride the stairs. Otherwise... Yeah, for sure. That one where he like flies over the next set, like the next stair yeah. set. That was when we were like, oh, yeah, this is going to be hard because you have to like <laughs> land so perfectly to be able to still jump to that pad because there's a gap in the in the ground there, if you can see it. Yeah, I'm yeah. laughing. But if I was there, I'd have had my eyes closed <laughs> being like, please don't die. Please, yeah, that was just. Yeah, for um, sure. Another thing loads of people were commenting on was obviously Mason Richards section. That's the first section he must have released in uh, over five years. 2014, I believe, is when this so ground, ground control six uh, years. section came out. Has it, he has skated since then because I've seen him I've seen him skating randomly uh-huh. on I saw him on uh, what was he skating after he left? Rems, he was skating those, was it Richie Eisler's for a while? Richie Eisler, yeah, Carbon Freeze? But mm, did yeah, he, he had some Richie's. Did he ever stop completely? Or Yeah, he didn't skate for like three years. And yeah. he so wasn't, he, you said he wasn't that keen on filming another part when you first approached him. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. He had no interest in it. Um, yeah, really what it was, he's, he just kind of like showed up again and was like, yeah, I just want to hang out, you know um he had bought skates but his plan was just like you know do some back rails on the mini ramp or whatever um and then yeah it happened pretty pretty suddenly i would say because he went one weekend from like yeah i don't want to film anything and the next one was like true top pointing on rails so it it happened pretty quick right and he was like and he was like well if i'm gonna come out with you guys if i'm gonna get one clip for the video I might as well just fucking go all in and film a section. And obviously all of us are like, yeah, you should definitely do that because it's fun to watch someone that good. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. He's clearly got, yeah, a, a definite degree of natural talent because he, oh, yeah. in that entire section, he did not look like someone who was not motivated. Like he's angry and screaming after every trick. He mm-hmm. was taking some brutal slams and yet, like, I would say over 50% of the clips in that were stunts. They were not, they were not like, it wasn't like tech switch ups or yeah, like, let, yeah. let's go for a nice line. It was, I'm going to land this or I'm going to get really hurt. Yeah. And the, and the reason is because, so I think it's his last clip in the video, like in the outro, he does like a soul on a ledge and he goes up to the rail, um, like a fish brain comes back down the rail and transfers back to the ledge. If you know what I'm talking about. This is last trick, but that was one of his first tricks, one of his first clips. And to him, that was like really tedious and he was annoyed and he was like, dude, this is not fun to me. So he was like, from here on out, I'm just going to just fucking just stick with hammers. Like they're more fun, they're more exciting. And that's what he did. And that's kind of what he focused on, just hammers. (laughs) Yeah, he was doing tricks that when you told me he was filming a section again, I was like, oh, well, we'll probably get a glimpse of the old Mason Richards. But he was doing tricks that he was doing in his prime 
like I mentioned his swag section, yeah. he does a 540 cane grind on a safer rail in swag than he does in the new section. The new yeah. section's oh, got yeah. a drop and a lamppost sticking out the yeah. side of it. Just just so many things to just fuck yeah. you up. Whereas yeah. in his prime, he was doing it down rails with grass on the other side. Yeah. Oh, for so. sure. And he, and he tried one earlier. Um, I think that falls in the trailer. He tried one, a five kind on, on another rail. And it was like a normal, pretty normal rail, you know, with like, uh, it wasn't a drop or nothing like grass on the side. And he fell like, he felt kind of scary, you know, like you're like, oh shit, are you okay? Um, yeah, so for him to just, his next attempt would be uh, a drop rail was pretty fucked up. Yeah. But but his thing is he he knows like, he's like, hey, I've already 540 kind of grinded down rails. There's no point in me doing that again unless it's like fucked up, like a drop <laughs> rail or a kink rail or like a 50 stair rail, you know? So he definitely gets it. And I think... And but this is one of the reasons why he stopped skating because he was so overcritical and like always just thought way too much into shit, way too much into spots, way too much into clips. And uh, so he was like struggling the whole video to like find that balance of like, I want to have fun, uh, I want to have a standard, but I don't want to be overcritical on myself because that's what ruined skating to begin with for me, right? Okay, yeah. that's fair enough. Um, mm-hmm. so you were did that does that mean like did you guys maintain contact over the years or did he keep coming out regularly or did you just not or did you guys just not hear from him for years and then all of a sudden he's like i want to come back out yeah so i i didn't see him because um this was all around the time after that ground control section um he he like uh, you know our friend fugi was filming another video and mason's super particular like he only wants to film with me for whatever reason so like at that time fugi was filming a video and he'd come out a little bit and then right after that i i moved to denver and then jan was filming his video and uh and that's kind of when he started just uh, he you know he wouldn't go to sessions and then just kind of just kind of gradually disappeared for a while and um i, I saw him one time when I came back to visit from Colorado and it was, um, I guess he hadn't really been skating at that time, but I didn't know this. You know what I mean? I was just like, I'll come to town and I'm going to hit up Mason. Hey, I'm in town. You know, if you want to skate or whatever. So he came out and he didn't skate at all. He, you know, he had skates, he had Solomon's, but he wasn't like actually skating, skating. He was just rolling around or whatever. And I guess at that time he had already kind of been drifting away, but I didn't know that. Um, but yeah, so that three years, during that three three years or two, two and a half, whatever it was, I never talked to him. I don't think anybody else did. And then it was super random how he got back. Uh, Mick saw him at like a bar one time. It was like, hey, man, like, what's up? You know, kind of caught up for a little bit. And then all of a sudden he, we see a photo of him and he went to Carriers to buy new pairs of skates. And okay. So we're like, oh, weird. I guess he's coming back or I don't know and yeah and then like randomly he just like shot me a text and was hey you know like let's let's hang out soon and then he came to at the time we were doing wednesday mini ramp sessions at that little concrete mini sometimes yeah. you might see yeah yeah i've seen that and yeah. he came out there and he was like struggling to do back royales and shit and i was like oh wow like you really <laughs> you, ha- you have, have been away <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah and then he was like, well, you know, I'll just come out to these sessions. They're fun. We just drink beer and skate a mini ramp. And then he just, you know, started turning into the old Mason. The problem is he was skating uh, SLs and he hated those skates. So as oh, soon as he got on yeah. some Aeons, he was just like killing it. Uh, yeah, I lasted like two months on a set of SLs and was like, wow, I just don't feel as if I can do anything on these. Yeah, that's got to be pretty hard for him as well because... If, if he was used to skating at that level and then he comes back and gets a pair of skates and then just everything feels unnatural or he's like feeling sketchy or whatever, you would think someone of that caliber would just put them off straight away because they're like, fuck this. Like, if I'm not coming yeah. back to start from the beginning again, this is bullshit. But then if he got it back really yeah. quick, then. But I can, I can appreciate that because you hear like of old pros like putting on a pair of skates again and then they try to do what they used to do and like, the, like I don't know, 
like hurt their shin or whatever and they're like nah i'm not nah no way i'm not buying into this yeah but, yeah yeah and i think usually it's because those guys they stop when they're older you know what i mean so they come back at like 35 plus and they get hurt a couple of times they're like hey fuck this but mason's you know he's like, this isn't worth it yeah he's still he's still like would have been still in his prime you know and, how old is he i mean he's still he's 27 okay oh yeah then yeah he's yeah. fine i i think that he wasn't you know the way i saw him skating i was like dang dude you suck but i think it was because <laughs> he didn't want to try a hard trick and then try a switch up off that hard trick like he didn't want to get sucked in i think yeah. he knew what he was doing he was just like yeah keep it easy back right house have fun all right okay so is he did he is he kept it up or was, was he just skating for that video like is he still coming out what's what's the situation with that so yeah basically after we finished we were all like yeah would, you know if we street skate it's going to be one spot and then we'll just go drink some beers um so we haven't really taken it serious until like the last few weekends but he can't he's had a knee issue for months and months and months so that's kind of where he's at right now you because mentioned his uh you mentioned his uh, previously his uh his, his phant- exercise routine. phantom injury that's that's hilarious you, uh, I, so, I, I think you should tell people about that people are going to want to know how he's hurt his knee okay well so i don't i don't know exactly what's going on with his knee but yeah he got it in an exercise routine of carrying 60 pounds in a backpack going up a hill just to like bulk up this was uh malik ashby's idea by the way and he, he got him onto it and as then in- uh, as in Philadelphia, Malik? No, 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 no. That's uh, uh yeah, oh, Malik Ashby's the. He's he from New York. New York. That's it. Um, yeah, oh God, yeah. what's his nickname? Um, I don't know. Mal. We we call him Mal. Doesn't he have a? He's the guy that rides Aeons, right? Uh, yeah, kind of. He's always switching around. Every time I see him, it's something different. It's but yeah, he was skating for USD. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember now. Who the hell was that? Yeah. Guy? Okay. Uh, so yeah he tried to get him on this you know routine and this is what mason claims i don't know i haven't confirmed this so maybe he's lying but yeah he would he would do this walk up a hill with all his weight and i guess that's what fucked up his knees and now he's hasn't really been able to skate he skated the box we made twice and uh i mean he is fucking killing it so we're like oh yeah bullshit your fucking knee hurts uh, but yeah he claims he's not going to street skate or anything till 2021 so we'll see I mean that's not that far away that's like a, yeah, no. a, a few months and plus the way the world's going right now it doesn't seem like most people are going to be street skating <laughs> until 2021 um, and yeah. yeah. all throughout filming that video you promised me it was going to be the last video you were like i'm done with this i'm not doing another full length like i fucked my <laughs> camera i fucked the fish eye you were like this is too expensive it doesn't seem like you've you've stuck with that because uh, you've you've yeah, already yeah. had John over John Sullivan staying over and the Candy Instagram page is still getting updated with new photos so it seems yeah. like you're back in the streets. Yeah, we so I think we all just got bored, you know, because between us we finished filming right around the time where COVID got bad, so it was like quarantine. Uh, yeah, I mean it's been a long time so we're all just kind of bored and we all enjoy street skating more than going to a park or diy or whatever it's just more exciting i don't know it always has been and we figure if we're gonna skate street we might as well try hard and we might as well film it um but yeah the main reason i didn't want to film again was because it, it i just felt like just me not just me but other people too just take it so goddamn serious sometimes you know what i mean it's like you get mad if you don't get a clip in the day or uh if we hit three four spots in a row that suck everyone's mad and that just gets old and i think that's what made me like just get burnt out on filming okay and also we filmed for a long time so it was like certain people were kind of done you know months ahead of time and other people needed to get stuff like up to the last day and it just kind of I don't know. It's just tough. Um, it kind of takes away the fun of it. So this time around, we're like, we're filming again, but if someone gets into the argument about, I don't like this spot or whatever, I'm just like, 
I think we, most of us now we're like, man, like that's let's just not take it too fucking serious. Just just skate, just skate, and we'll just film. I don't know what it's going to be called. I don't know how long we're going to film. I don't know if it's going to be a full length video. What it is, just just enjoy it more than the last one, because last time we took it serious. Um, and, and, you know, understandable because we all knew what was on our backs, uh, what we put on our backs. So it was like, we put a lot of stress on ourselves and I think it took away some of the fun of it, but by the time it came out and the response we got definitely made it all worth it, but I still don't want to, we, none of us really want to take anything that serious again. So, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. And obviously the video is dedicated to Keaton Newsome and yeah, you wanted to do his legacy justice, but watching the video it looks like you guys are having the time of your lives like when you see all the non-skating footage mm -hmm. it looks like there's a big squad of you going out you're all having fun there's like it looks like those people just basically drinking on the session it, all like, the time. it, it yeah. doesn't the footage doesn't give off the impression that you guys are really like obviously everyone's skating hard in it like even like i mean you say that filming takes away your time from skating You've got a full part in that video that's got good clips in it. Mm. So it's like, it, yeah, it, it's, it doesn't well, look like you guys are like, you know, I don't know, treating it like a job or like taking it too yeah. seriously. And I think that was really only towards the end of it. You know what I mean? Because, okay. uh, yeah, I, I know, I know myself uh, early on, I just, I wasn't getting any clips. It was just, it was tough, you know. And then some just kind of flipped and then I was having more fun. And I was like, you know what, even if you don't like the spot, just, just skate it. Just, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but I, I think, I mean, we always had fun at the sessions, you know what I mean? So even the days where we'd have a lot of fun and no one fucking got clips, it was important we had to remind ourselves like, hey, still had a good time. We're still filming for a year and a half. Like, it's going to get done. There's no point of stressing about it. But I think towards the end, it's it's just easy to feel that way because then you're starting as you start to wrap up. Everyone's like, "Well, there, you know, I didn't do any of this kind of thing, or I need more gaps, or whatever it may be." And then you kind of put yourself in a position where you feel like you have to go and do certain things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and yeah, that's then, and that's kind yeah. of where stress comes from. But just filming all the time, like, yeah, ninety nine percent of the time we're having fun because we're just yeah, we just fuck around. People are definitely always drinking beer at sessions and stuff and talking shit to each other. It's, yeah, it's fun. But I think oh. that's why we want to get back out there. <laughs> nice. Um, was it you that broke the camera with that, with that fisheye kick or was that, that was you? Yeah. yeah. I, you, you showed I, I me the photo it. with the camera, like the, it was snapped off the end, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it came, um, uh, you know, I don't even know what the part is called, but it, it with the focus ring and everything just yeah. popped, just broke right off. Uh, and the fisheye was obviously fucked and I kept the fisheye um, so now I have that camera like the camera still works but it doesn't technically it won't I don't trust it to hold the weight of a fisheye okay so if I have to use fisheye on it I'm like super careful I'll never point it down like I'll always you know hold it up so that there's no weight coming down if you know what I mean right and I know you can't see my hands but yeah, I'll hold it. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you. I don't ever, I don't ever do this. Right. Because then all the weight's just like pulling down. Um, Surely you can't film long with it now if the, the front end's wrecked because then it won't zoom in and out, uh, will it? Yeah, it's it's weird. The the zoom and the and the manual focus always worked. It always huh. worked right after that. Yeah, and I super glued it back on. Um, but now I got another camera. I got an HVX. And so now I just strictly fisheye on that one. Okay. Or not strictly fisheye, but... I don't ever use fisheye on my HPX now because I don't need to. So now I got, right. I got a, two cameras and then Brandon has one and then Cody got one too. So, yeah. He so, didn't, Cody San, Sanders? Cody Sanders. Sanders, yeah. He didn't, he didn't have much footage in that video, is he? <sighs> yeah, because he, um, he, he, he was working a, a job where he'd always be working weekends. Okay. And he was like pretty much the only one. Um, well, him and Isaac would work weekends, uh, unfortunately. Is that, and then is that Cody's like, job with the, the FBI? Yeah. 
no. I, I, what, what is it? He does something. He did something weird for a living for a while, and I was like, "You, you're a secret agent, aren't you?" There's something he did. Like uh, he did quite. I'm sure he had like quite a powerful job at one point. I'm sure. Cody Sanders. Like, when I, I interviewed him, yeah, the pretty boy with the long hair. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and he he moved out. Know. Didn't he move it to like California for like five minutes or something? Yeah, he's. I think he's done that a couple times or a few times. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I can't remember what the kids. conversation was. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, pretty much like the last, like last half of a month. I don't even know. Like last few sessions, he had finally started. He got a job where he worked weekends, and he was like, "Well, fuck, you know, a little late on that." But <laughs> the Hey, but the, he was like the next one. Uh, I for sure want to have a part because now he he doesn't. He works. I think we pretty much all work a Monday through Friday job now. So okay, uh, we we can all be together on the weekends now. So uh, is, Isaac, is Isaac that you're referring to uh, one of Isaac the Parks. Isaac what? Isaac Parks. He's uh, is that, is that he, one of the brothers? No, no, no. Who's the who's He's the guy not. that does who's the guy that does the in spin soul? Uh, and the rail, and he's got a he's got a brother that's also amazing at skating. Oh, the Isaacs, William. That, and Julian. Ah, that's that's where they get their second names, Isaac, not their first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was surprised to see him in it because I didn't think yeah. either of them still skated, but he came out and just shat yeah, all over that story. rail. Yeah, that's a funny story though. That that clip is six years old because um, so this was that was filmed by Fugi when I went to Europe for the first time, like when I met you and when I was there for a while. Yeah, uh, I left him with my camera, and he had filmed that originally. It was supposed to be in Jan's video. I don't know okay. if you can see Jan. I think he's in one of the shots, filming fisheye or something. Right. But yeah, that was filmed in 2014. Uh, yeah, and you know, I talked to William a while ago, and I told him I want him to, to at least get a clip and candy, and it never happened. And then I realized, you know what? I have those fucking clips. Jan never did anything. And they're just sitting there. And was, I was like, was he the one that used to ride for SSM or NEM or? Yeah, they both. One of those, it? Yeah. I don't know if it was NEM or, I know it was SSM. It was, yeah, it was they definitely well, one of those. Skated. Yeah. It's basically the same Yeah. Thing. And William skated for Fester too. Yeah. Right, William's okay. like fucking sickest, sickest skater. I, I remember them having very good style. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, he's sick. But yeah, that's, that's old. That's six years old. Uh, I was like, dude, I'm throwing it in there. It's it's a good clip to clip. keep a hold of. It is a good yeah. clip. Like, yeah, when I saw that, yeah. I was like, I remember that guy. You know, when you just instantly, you just see like the way someone does a trick and you're like, yep, that's familiar. I've definitely seen you do that before. Yeah, um, for sure. They, I mean, you you don't mistake him for someone else. You know what I mean? His style, as soon as you see it, you're like, oh shit, that guy. Yeah. And, and William's one of those guys that, like, Literally everybody, people always ask all the time, like, where's this guy at? Like, we need to see more footage of him. And that's that's always how it's been, I feel like. Probably always how it will be. But that's what makes him, like, so special. When you see him skating, you're like, oh, fuck. Very nice. nice. Um, you've mentioned a couple of times Jan Welsh's video. That video never came out, though, did it? Yeah, I, I don't really know what happened there. I've heard Is... conflicting stories. Because he filmed for a long time, like two years or something. Yeah, and he was in Europe a couple of times filming for it as well because I'd see him mm-hmm. at Winter Clash, he'd have his camera equipment. But yeah, nothing came out. Yeah, see, so I think Jan said that um, his like his hard drive, his computer crashed or whatever, that and he old, lost that, everything. That old line, okay. <laughs> but then other people say he just he was over it and deleted the shit. I, I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't want to speculate. But yeah, he, he had a lot of plans for it. I know it sucks because I think uh, Jason Howard was filming a section for it. And he's like, you know, he's older now. He's older than me and he has like a daughter and he just got a house and everything. So that was probably his plan to like have one more, one last section or whatever. Yeah. And, and now all that footage is, is just toast. It's just gone. And I don't remember, I think where Besky was going to have a section. It, it was going to be a, a long video, I'm sure. That I know I always heard this guy's going to have a session, this guy. Okay. And he was always filming, but yeah, no, none of that shit saw a lot of day. That's crazy. All right. Yeah, it sucks. Um, oh, I totally forgot what I was going to ask you. It was related to that, and it's totally left my head. Nope. Um, Andrew Brim. 
he did i was really surprised he didn't even that's when you know the caliber that you've got in the video because i was 100 percent expecting him to have the ender section and then obviously like mason just went full psychopath on it and um, yeah what's what's the situation is he just riding flow for is it is it razors he's on now He's on Razor because he was on UST yeah. for a little bit, and now he's on Razor. But he's he's just on the Flow team. Um, no, he, he's not Flow. I, I don't really know what I'm supposed to say. How much I can say? Not that it matters. It, it seems skating. like you know something that I don't, and you're trying really carefully not to tell me. Um, so I, I mean, Razors hasn't come out and like established their team in forever. You know, you don't know who's pro. You don't know who's Flow. Oh, no one it's knows what's going one, on with Razors team. No one knows like what's going on with thing. Razors. Yeah. Yeah, but he's definitely on Razors. I mean, he's on, you know, official. I, I would definitely say he's higher up than Flo. That's I love like, how I've just busted you and put you on the spot. You're like, shit, uh, I cannot tell him. So something is going to happen with him and Razors. It's just not been announced yet. That's what you're telling me. Possibly so. Yeah. Okay, that's um, all. I, that's all I need to know because <laughs> let's be, that section was insanely good. And yeah. even just the stuff he puts out on Instagram, messing about on those little P rails, like he yeah. does, he does stuff on those like slider bars that is like you would have saw that in a Kelso slider bar edit when they were tap dancing all over them in their basement. It's, yeah, for sure. And the oh, fact yeah, man, that so much of it switching natural is just yeah, yeah he's, disgustingly he mind boggling. Yeah, it's it's stupid. He spins so much, he spun so much switch that it's like. It's almost natural. Like his ender, the the zero topsoil fakey seven out, that's a switch fakey seven. I feel like I see him spin that way more than the other way nowadays. But yeah, he's, he if he can do a trick one way, he can do a trick the other way. And that's what's so cool about it. Like him and Mason are both like that. You know what I mean? Mason doesn't even call anything switch. It's just left or right. And I guess because Happy used to do that. And that's like uh, his okay. favorite skater, script skater ever. So. Yeah, you could definitely see that influence when he was younger. Now, yeah. now I don't know what the hell his influence is. Did you <laughs> did you read the James Bauer interview that we did? Yeah, yeah, I did. And he he was quite interested in Mason. He was yeah, he was, was asking funny. a lot of questions about Mason's uh, let's let's call them patriotic t shirts. Yeah, that was funny because Mason's definitely a, a conservative guy, and we talked about it. And at first, he was like, "Man, fuck that guy." And then we were like, I mean, all he literally did was tell the exact truth. And he was like, oh, that's true. You're right. I don't think he meant, yeah. Like, I don't think Bauer yeah, meant it was a like, negative by it. I think, oh, I, for sure. actually, if anything, if anything, I think, like, Bauer thought that Mason just had, like, a wild sense of humor and was like, oh, this guy's wearing all these joke T-shirts. And it was yeah. me that was like, I don't think those are joke T-shirts. <laughs> like, I don't think he's wearing yeah. those with any sense of irony. Like, the one where yeah. it's like, he's got a T-shirt that says, try burning this flag. That T-shirt may as well just say "Let's fight." Like that—that's a t- <laughs> that, that's a very yeah. like, antagonistic T-shirt. It's like For I sure. dare you to to step to me, basically. Yeah. Um, I, at first, he got it. Yeah, he was like, it just took it the wrong way, and I was like, "No, dude, James is a super cool guy. Like, I guarantee he does not care who you voted for or whatever." Uh, yeah, he just probably thought your outfits were funny, and they were funny. I mean, he—you know—some of the shirts he buys, he knows what he's doing. He's like. Yeah. I showed up i gotta get a clip in this shirt like that's what i mean like yeah like he, yeah yeah he, he's well aware of what he's doing so he can't play like he can't play innocent when someone points it out and be like yeah. oh what's that about and he goes oh i don't know like you know what you're doing yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah um, that was funny that was a funny interview but that was quite interesting um so i know you're not allowed to talk about it but does that mean that there's mm. more is there more broom footage on the way then? Because it's like it, you're. I'm. I'm uh, getting the impression that he's got he's got another video part coming out, or he's got something in the horizon. Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Kind of too much. <laughs> See, because I, I don't. I don't like. Uh, let me rephrase this right, so he doesn't get offended. I think that yeah, I would like for Andrew to have um, edits and sections made by other people. I think it's good for him. Okay. Um, you almost never want to watch one guy edit the same guy's stuff all the time. You know what I mean? Um, but he always wants me to do his things, like his whatever it may be. And I'm like, sure. Yeah. You know, I love filming Andrew. It's fun. And I love to edit Andrew. 
because I just style wise, he's just fucking sick. Sure. But for me, I'm like, I, I wish he would branch out a little bit and be able to work with other guys to see that perspective of them because people have different visions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he definitely has some stuff in the works. He made who? Who did he make the the Valo? He made like a Valo supporter section or something like that. A while yeah, back. I yeah. remember that. And it, mm-hmm. and what was it in V thirteens? Yeah, I think that was like when he first got on Valo. Okay, but that wasn't um, with you. That was that was with someone no. else, wasn't it? Yeah, his name's Josh. We call him Gogo. That's his nickname. But he's the one that did all the uh, graphics and everything, and designed the book for Candy. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, plus. It kind of makes sense that Andrew would want to keep working with you because if it wasn't for you, a lot of people wouldn't know who Andrew Broom is. Like some of his, like all his early sections were made by you. And if you look at his biggest sections, they were made by you. So like, obviously if he didn't have the ability, you wouldn't have anything to film, but like he, he does owe a lot to you in the sense that you created those great parts. Like you, you filmed them and edited them well. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, like I said, I don't have a problem with it. I'm always down to thumb Andrew and I know he's just so comfortable with me and that's why, you know, he always, he'll come to me, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think it'd be cool to see him. Like I'd love to see, him, you know, section with like Adam or Tom West or Jonas or something. That would be amazing, but obviously harder to, harder to do because we live close to each other. So that comes into to play for sure. That sounds true. But yeah, he has um, he has a couple things in the works. So one is like a promo for something, and I okay. I can't say what it is, but it's a promo. And then uh, him and and Mason, we I think we talked Mason into doing like a split section, like a split VOD, um, and that will be whenever Mason is healthy again. So. so. A split VOD, Andrew Broom and Mason Richards. Yeah. That would be, I could see that doing very, very well. Yeah. 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 So, but we got to talk, we had to talk Mason into it because Andrew's always down to skate and, you know, film and stuff. But for Mason, he, for, for Mason Candy was, that was it. You know, he was like, I'm just going to do this one last time then, I guess, you know, for Keaton. Um, so when he, when we finished, he really didn't skate that much. And we thought it was because, oh, he's, you know, he's done. He's retired or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like I said, he was skating the box the last couple of weekends and he was like fucking killing it. Like, but pushing himself to where he's trying new stuff. Okay. So that's not what someone who's done does, you know what I mean? So we, I think we, we finally talked him into it, but he wants to be healthy to do it. Yeah. Cause in his eyes, um, he looks at the money you can make from a section. He's like, I can just work at my job or I can just work more and make that money. He doesn't care about uh, sponsors or, or getting money from skating. You know what I mean? So it's a little harder to convince him. For me, I'm just like, I just think it would be fucking badass to see a section like that with you two because, um, I mean, you're definitely the best two skaters in austin and you two that are like definitely on a pro level you know what i mean so who wouldn't want to see you guys and they're and they're so different too oh yeah Yeah. they've they've got very very different styles but i think i think it would work together in in a video yeah definitely Um, and and he is right there isn't like if if you're pushing yourself that far it's not for monetary gain because Mm -hmm. like you you guys obviously made up like like a lot of money in blading terms off candy, but considering how long it took to film it, when you actually break it down, it's like that doesn't work out to a lot every month or whatever, especially when you consider sure. costs like, I don't know, yeah, for gas sure. and food and stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Also, wasn't it true that Mason Richard once, didn't he once, didn't he turn down a pro skate at one point? Or he was meant yeah. to get a pro skate from Rems? And yeah, he, he, he turned it down, yeah. Because... Mason always had this idea where um, like he'd get it offered to pro skate and then he, no one would know about it. He'd film this promo, the promo would release when it was announced. And then he would do like a tour, uh, like a big release kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, and that's like when he was at his height 
um, just producing all the time. And that's what he wanted to have like a, this big release and be able to do tours to different shops and things like that. But with REMS, like just the money was never there. The opportunity was never there. So when he did get offered to skate, I think it was right before probably that he stopped skating because he was like, he wasn't really producing a whole lot of stuff. And he was like, this is pretty shitty timing. I don't want to, I don't want to pro skate when I had the, my last edit was a year ago or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, he turned it down. That is fair enough. Like see when you have people who have such strong visions for skating and especially for their own skating and how they're perceived, like there's certain skaters who you can see they're, they make a conscious effort to portray themselves in the best possible light or they're like, I'm not putting this out because it's not my mm-hmm. best work or stuff like things like that. Yeah. Or they'll just scrap entire sections because they're like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not happy that I, I, I don't want this to be what I'm remembered for or whatever. So yeah. if that's, if that's his interpretation of it and he was like, you know, I, I don't want to receive a pro skate when I don't feel I'm at my peak or I don't feel, you know, I'm at my most prolific, then mm-hmm. I, I think that's pretty, because nine out of 10 skaters would just take the skate. Yeah. They go, oh, oh sure. you're giving me a skate with my name on it. Thanks. And then bow out. Like how many people have got a pro skate and then you've never heard from them again? Like, yeah, it's, it's definitely, a, uh, yeah, I think it's common that people, if you want to be pro, you know, there's very few pros that actually have, uh, that care that much about that kind of stuff. The, the way they're presented. Some are just like, hey, whoever will fucking take me, uh, I'll skate for this brand, that brand, you know, switching skate brands. Um, yeah. When you're like 35, hey, can I be pro? Yeah, that kind of shit is, it, that's the opposite of what he thinks is right. You know what I mean? Mason thinks there's like 30 is the the age. If you're 30, after you're 30, you should like relinquish your spot to someone younger okay. and i think that's just because he kind of got fucked you know in that regard there's there's exceptions to that rule there's there's the richie eisler exception absolutely yeah um, yeah there's always exceptions for sure but for the most part it's like if you if you're over 30 in his eyes like and you don't have anything else going on as far as like a career or, yeah uh, some sort of family life then your priorities are just not in line and I, that's one of the reasons he quit too is because he felt like he needed to get his life in order a little bit because all he thought about was the skating and the edits and lists, making lists of tricks at spots that he needed to do for this or that. And yeah, he got burnt out. And then he just decided to take care of um, himself, his future, like going to school and figure out what he wanted to do and things like that. That's fair enough. Um, so <laughs> I, love, I love how you went from I'm done with this shit. I'm like taping, I'm taking a step back from projects. I'm just going to skate now. You know, I'm getting rid of my camera. It's too expensive. You've listed about, I think you've listed like three or four projects that like you basically got in the future at some point (laughs) now. So you went from nothing to now multiple that we can potentially look forward to if COVID doesn't destroy too much of our free time. Yeah. Well, a lot of it is, um, I, I feel like it's, I, I need to, I need to help people out in a way. Like it, let's say I, I actually was like, yeah, I'm fucking done. Sold my cameras. Um, there's not really anybody else who would want to dedicate their time to make things. And I think it's important to keep, uh, like our scene going, you know what I mean? Keep, keep everybody hungry, keep everybody wanting to to produce stuff especially if we just made this video and like everybody got um you know we got plenty of comments on like instagram you know everyone could see but also everybody got private messages texts you know what i mean with just people showing so much love to them so obviously they don't want to just stop you know they're like yeah. that just motivates them to keep going so i think it's important to be able to to uh, help people get their shit out like that plus you guys there's not a bad section in that video as far as I'm concerned, but you guys have got an incredible scene, not just in terms of how strong it is, like the amount of skaters that you've got, but also the level of the skaters you've got. So if you didn't document it, you would look back on that and regret it. 
Like obviously you have with yeah. Dag Days and Swag and Waterloo and Loco and you had videos out before that. I know there's videos I've missed there, but to to not continue to document it when they're continuing to still skate at that level and so are you, it, mm-hmm. it, it would just be, yeah, it would just be a shame, basically. I think so. I think so, man. Like anytime I, you know, I go out and uh, maybe have a bad weekend or something or it's just like, dude, we're not going to be able to do this forever. You know, I'll look back on the time where I wish I could rally up the boys on a Sunday morning and go skate. And so I think while we can do it, then yeah, we should document it. So the whole reason I started filming was because it was like, yeah, if we're going to go out and skate and potentially get clips or get hurt, we might as well fucking film it. And that's just always how I've looked at it. Uh, but yeah, one day, you know, it doesn't matter how old you get it. It's like one day you're not going to be able to jump on that down rail or drop rail. You know what I mean? You just can't. Yeah. And, and it's going to be, yeah. And I think about things like that in the future. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's weird to think because we have younger guys and one day us older guys are just going to start dropping out and those younger guys won't be able to call us anymore. And it's going to be different. It's going to be weird. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Especially. That well, makes sense. Yeah. Oh no. Cause you've got different people at different stages of our lives are like, I'm 37. I skate with guys that are like 25 uh-huh. and because because they're that young, you kind of forget that you're not that young because especially if you're of a similar ability to them and you're like, I don't know, say you go to a handrail and they're not feeling it and then you start jumping onto it first because you're like, you've got more confidence that day and then they start doing it and you just kind of forget that there's this massive, like over a decade gap in age because you're both basically attacking the same obstacle and yeah, you might feel it a little bit more the next day, but the fact is if you're both able to mm. do it, it doesn't really matter that there's that essentially generational gap between you. Um, especially if you're on the same wavelength and you can have, it's different if they're like a stupid little kid and you're a grumpy old man or whatever, and you don't have anything common to talk about. But if you guys are on a similar wavelength or have similar interests, then mm. you don't really tend to notice that that age difference as much. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So I think I'm, uh, yeah, I'm the oldest one in the crew and I'm 37 and then Brandon is 22, I think maybe 23. I don't know. Okay. Sorry, Brandon. But um, yeah, anytime. And we always fuck with Brandon and Brandon will fuck with me sometimes, which I like cause no one really like dishes it to me, which kind of sucks. Cody will too. But so yeah, when Brandon sometimes will give me shit about a spot or a trick or something, I'm just like, all right, dude, whatever, you know, Call me in 15 years and I'll see how your body feels and, you know, see where you're at. Because when I was your age, I was definitely just doing whatever the fuck I wanted. You've just opened yourself up for a world of abuse because obviously the guys are going to watch this to, I don't know, hear what you've said about them. And now that you've, <laughs> you've basically just given them an open invite to roast you. So I don't, I don't know if that's the, the wisest move. Hey, I, I welcome it. I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, no one just, it's its weird because we always, we all fuck with each other, but I get it the least. And I think it's because I'm the oldest and they just like, look at me with, I don't want to say a father figure, but like an older brother, you know what I mean? Like they look at me for a lot of things, but sometimes, yeah, I just want to be one of the boys, you know, fucking roast me, try to, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But Brandon, Brandon has no problem giving me shit sometimes, which is cool. All right. Okay. I yeah. think, I think that's as good a place as any to stop. I don't know how long we've actually been talking for. It's got to be been about an hour. Yeah. Maybe longer. I don't know. Probably now. Yeah. There's no timer on this thing. I'm still getting used to zoom. I've, I've done yeah. it. I did a couple of practice calls so that I didn't screw this one up and I didn't like, I don't know, I accidentally delete all the footage, but uh, in terms of how it'll actually turn out, I've got no idea. <laughs> I can see it at the top says it's recording. Um, I'm guessing that's your screen. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you got anything you want to say before we, we call it quits? Um, well, you, you know, just, uh, I just want to give everybody a shout out. Everybody that supported candy, sent us messages and love and reposts and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it, I definitely did not want to continue doing any kind of filming. And I don't think most of the guys they looked at it as their last section, but, really all the feedback is what made us want to just 
keep going. No point of stopping when in our minds we're like at our peak popularity right now. So yeah, thank you guys. I couldn't agree more. Well, in that case, I'll let you get back to your, uh, your dog parenthood. And uh, <laughs> thanks for taking the time to do it. All right. Thanks, buddy. I'll, I'll speak to you then. when you release the next video. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Speak to you yeah. soon. Sick. Later, man. Bye.